So now the fun part, you actually get to go to a shelter and find your dog. This video will give you some tips on how to evaluate a dog. Something to be aware of is that being stuck in a shelter is kind of a shitty thing for a dog to go through. <laughs> Big surprise. So understandably, their behavior might be a little bit off. A lot of times dogs don't really show their true personality in the shelter. So our big objective with this video and with this evaluation method is to determine as best you possibly can if the dog you're looking at is relaxed enough to show you who he really is or if he's behaving abnormally. Like, is he truly calm and easygoing or is he shut down? Is he energetic or is he frantic? This is the single most effective way to find a great dog. Dog speak is a hell of a lot more subtle than you might think, and once you understand it, you'll be amazed at the whole new world of canine communication that opens up to you. Oh, hey there. So while I was reviewing the footage for this video, uh, I realized that I kind of forgot to make my entire point about this body language thing. So learning dog body language is gonna be the most reliable way for you to really know what you're getting into. What happens a lot, at shelters is shelter staff will introduce a dog to a potential adopter and this trained staff member is watching this dog say all kinds of things about who he is and how he's feeling but the adopter doesn't always realize the dog is saying anything at all or worse they think he's saying something he's not the most common miscommunication uh, is the difference between a dog who is shut down and a dog who's calm they kind of look the same if you don't know what you're looking for a dog who's shut down means he's so afraid or so intimidated that he has just stopped moving, pretty much. He might just be sitting still, he'll be moving very slowly, and a lot of times an adopter looks at this dog and says, oh wow, he's so calm and relaxed. Now, this dog is the opposite of calm and relaxed, and once this dog gets out into a home, uh, you might start to see his true personality. Uh, my dog is... Not my dog, but my shelter dog. There he is. His name is Bear. Hey! Come here. Come here. The camera's weird, I know. Um, anyway, what was the last thing? So you're gonna wanna do some research and learn how to tell the difference between a calm dog and a shutdown dog. You're gonna wanna learn about stress signals so that when you go to a shelter and you find a dog who is not showing any stress signals and seems to be pretty relaxed, like actually relaxed and not shut down, uh, that means you're probably, you know, what you see is probably what you're gonna get with this dog. He's peeing on my leash. Thanks. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't adopt a dog who's showing signs of stress. A lot of times those dogs will be perfectly fine when you get them out of this crazy place. Uh, you just need to be aware that the dog is suppressing his normal behavior at the moment and he will probably have some uh, changes in his behavior once you get him into your home. All right, let's go back to the much higher quality camera setup. Hey. if you don't mind. Uh, first thing to pay attention to is the way the dog holds himself. A dog who is feeling pretty good will have no tension in his body. He'll move around a lot. Even a calm dog will move around a lot. Uh, he'll be kind of wiggly in the shoulders and in the spine. Look at the face. The ears should move around a lot. His eyes should be almond shaped, not too wide. The forehead will be free of tension. A dog who is uncomfortable may be very slow and very still. The eyes may be wide, wide enough to show you the whites of the eye. He'll be tense all the way through his body. He might yawn a lot, he might blink slowly, or deliberately turn his head away and then back.
if you're meeting a small dog and you put her in your lap and she's just sitting there very rigid, not really interacting, not making eye contact, this is probably a very nervous dog. What you want to see with a small dog in your lap is no tension in the body. She should look up at your face. She might sniff or lick your face. The ears might bounce up and down a lot. I guess what it comes down to is you want to see no hesitation to interact. Like if she's just sitting there ignoring you when you talk to her or ignoring you when you offer your hand to sniff, uh, she's probably very tense, not calm, not calm. When you go to the shelter, you'll want to bring some really good treats, either chicken or deli meat or hot dogs. If you want to get really fancy, you can bring two kinds of treats. You can bring the real meat and you can bring something boring like dog biscuits. And this will help you uh, evaluate a dog's level of food motivation. A dog who goes nuts over boring dog biscuits will probably be easier to train. Also bring two kinds of dog toys like a tennis ball and a squeaky toy. Bit of a disclaimer, you always want to follow the shelter's lead on the meet and greet uh, process. Some shelters have a much more structured process than others do. I'll tell you my method, but of course, always follow the shelter's lead. Walk through the entire shelter, see all the dogs, uh, talk to staff and volunteers, ask them questions, tell them what you're looking for. They might have some suggestions for you. When you're walking through, Keep in mind that you can't really judge a dog by their kennel presence. Dogs often act very differently in their kennel than they do when they're out. A perfect example of this is this dog, Benedict. Benedict's kennel behavior could be mistaken for aggression. He's got tense body language, intense barking and jumping. It intimidates potential adopters, understandably. But when I took him for a walk, he was a totally different dog. He's highly food motivated, he loves people, and he stayed relaxed and focused on me despite all the distractions. Benedict would make a great agility dog or a pet for an active family. So don't be afraid to give a chance to a dog who might seem a little bit crazy in their kennel. They could be a hidden gem. So now you've got a potential candidate out of his kennel to meet him. The dog may need a moment to stretch his legs or sniff or go to the bathroom. So give him a chance to do that and then call him to you and introduce yourself. After the initial warm up, offer toys and treats. Many dogs will be too distracted by the overwhelming environment uh, to play with toys in the shelter, but you will find a lot who uh, are very excited by the toys you offer. These dogs are often good candidates for agility or other dog sports. When you offer food, most dogs will take real meat treats. Lack of interest in real meat indicates that the dog is uh, too overwhelmed or too afraid. But if the dog shows a lot of interest in these treats you're offering him, uh, if he you know, ignores all the other distractions in favor of the treats, or if he is just as excited about boring dog biscuits as he is about real meat, this indicates a highly food motivated, easier to train dog. Does he pay attention to you despite the distractions? If you have a dog out in the play yard and he wants to focus on you despite all the exciting stuff happening around him, uh, that's a good sign. It indicates that he might be easier to handle, might be easier to train. So now that you've had the chance to politely introduce yourself, it's time to get a little bit rude. Gently grab her ears, her tail, and her paws. Stand over her, lean over her a little bit. Some dogs will be uncomfortable with this, but the best family dogs won't mind at all. Uh, if you're not comfortable handling the dog this way, ask a staff member to do it. The best family dogs will be thrilled to meet your kids. Watch out for any dog who ignores or avoids them or just doesn't seem to really be that excited about them. This could just be his way of telling you that he's not a kid person. Dogs sometimes act differently in different environments. Uh, so if the shelter has, for example, an indoor meet and greet room and an outdoor play yard, ask the staff if you can see the dog in both places. He'll probably pull on leash, which is fine. I mean, you can't really expect perfect leash manners in this chaotic environment. My dog is barking downstairs. Speaking of chaotic environments, just take note of if the dog seems to pull too much for you. Like, uh, is he dragging the staff member around? Uh, is this dog gonna be too much for you to handle? You're also looking for signs of aggression or fear. Does he lunge, bark, growl, or cower at passing dogs or people? <laughs> And don't rush through a meet and greet just for the staff member's sake. Uh, I get people all the time who apologize for taking up my time, which is very nice of them, but it's unnecessary. You're making a big life-changing decision. 
and take all the time you need. I always recommend meeting more than one dog, even if you think you found the one on your first try. Meeting more than one dog will give you a better idea of how dogs behave in the shelter, what's normal, what's not, and what could be a potential warning sign. Now you have a good idea of what you're working with. You've maybe found some dogs that fit your criteria. You've ruled out some dogs that have your deal breakers. There is no perfect evaluation method. After all the careful preparation you've done, it usually comes down to a gut feeling. Sometimes a dog is perfect on paper and he fits all your criteria, but you're just not feeling it. You're looking for a hell yes, not an I guess. And if you don't find one you really connect with, it's fine to take some time to think about it and come back later. So that's about it. Hopefully this video series will help you find your dog. Uh, and if it does, feel free to let me know. I'd love to hear your story. And of course, once you have your dog, we've got plenty of resources over at ThreeLostDogs.com to help you get them settled in. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.